is my hope, and 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 I I I've been saying it for years. In diversity, there is strength, and uh, you know, if you take music from different cultures, they the particular music represents a large part of the soul of that culture. Mm -hmm. So when I put all these souls together musically, it's effortless. It comes together effortlessly. It's not. A, I don't have to jam it, you know, because then. Uh, you create Frankenstein if you try to, you know, it has to or come in, it, yeah. has to, you know, and it just comes together and it's so beautiful because of the colors. One singular person, monochromatic, it's like having one color in you or just everything is black and white. One culture, one attitude about music is, uh, to me, it's stifling and it's dead. Do you think that's changing now with you know, obviously the internet and how people can get their music mm. from anywhere? Or do you think it's actually making the world a little bit smaller? I, I'm not sure I understood which way you went. The world is getting smaller, for sure. And I think, yes, we're becoming aware of each other. Thank God. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, was, it was one of the reasons why I traveled so extensively around the world. I mean, we've, we've played in China and India. And, We've gone to everywhere, Malaysia, um, Philippines, I can go to South Korea, Japan, Australia. You know, I can go on and on and on and on. And you touch all these cultures, you feel them. And, and the learning that comes from that is enormous. So you can see now with the explosion of the communication uh, that's happening now, I think it's a great thing for the planet. I think it's just... The, the planet just got very small. We're all very aware. They're beginning to become very aware of each other, which is wonderful. In a good way. Okay, we actually have a live question for you, which okay. is great. So it just got submitted to us. Okay. Look at this, hot off the press, I must say. Okay, okay Valerie. Uh, Hi, Valerie. <laughs> in the United States. Myself and my family absolutely love your music and have found ourselves in wonder at the complexity of your pieces. My 17-year-old son would like to know if you considered yourself a gifted child and when was the first time you began writing music? Uh, that's a great question, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, no, I did not consider myself a gifted child. I, I didn't think I was going to become a musician until after I finished college. Okay, but did your parents consider you a gifted child? Probably don't all parents consider yeah, okay, that it's a challenge. That's a good point, yes, that's a good point. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I was very lucky with the parents. You know, both my mother and my father, uh, intelligent, they, they encouraged us to get into the arts and into athletics and, you know, exercise, eat well, be, you know. And they were loving, they gave us a lot of love and affection. So we grew up um, sheltered, I should say. And, um, in a good way, sheltered? In a good way, yes, absolutely. No, they were, <laughs> they were, they, they were, my father is a, a philosopher, uh, and he, when he speaks, you listen. That's he, how it should be. <laughs> and he's, he's quiet. He speaks very quietly, and he doesn't use a lot of words. I've never been hit. He would never hit me. But I preferred many times that would have hit me and get it over <laughs> with instead of having the lecture. I know that feeling, <laughs> I know that feeling. Yes, because uh, you are actually hurt more by the words sometimes, mm -hmm. but they're also impactful. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think I finished the question. I'm gonna what finish was the, I think the question, what was the last part there? When was the first time you began writing? Ah, I, you know, that's, that's where the gift came in. I had a tendency to wanna get up on the piano and play, and I refused to take lessons. And my parents were intelligent enough to allow that to happen. Uh, my brother was taking piano lessons. I refused. And you didn't want to. I didn't want to. But I played the piano. That's how I developed perfect pitch. Because I would repeat music I heard on the radio. I'd go on the piano and play it. And then I would pretty much figure out, now I develop perfect pitch. And you say you didn't have a gift? <laughs> well, it was developed. Yes. It is a gift, but it's something you develop. You know, you, maybe it's given to me by God, but if you don't work at it, and I work at it because I loved playing the piano, and I like to play things that I wrote, whatever came to mind. I would like to improvise. So how old were you when you started writing music? 
I think something that would be barely listenable to uh, <laughs> probably that, right? ar ar yeah. ar around from like nine or ten years old maybe I would have something that nine or ten years old most kids are just learning how to like ride a bike at, at that age much less write music I don't know if it was anything any good but <laughs> do you have any of that did you keep any of it when you were that young uh, my mother did but I don't dare to listen to the tapes <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I haven't listened to the tapes. I have them in the safe somewhere. Well, you know what? Maybe we'll post them online. How's no, that? I'm not. <laughs> the fans would love it. Okay, let me get to another question. Uh, Natalie in Canada, I know I have known your music for about 25 years, and each time I listen to a new CD for the first time, it's like I've always known it, like it was meant to be. So my question is, where does your, where does your music do, or what does it do, when you create a piece and how do you feel when you listen to it after it's all recorded? I don't mean pride, emotion, deep inside, but the spiritual part. I know when I listen to it, I get full of energy, hopes, dreams, joy, insights, marvel, and so much more. It makes me happy. And then she says, uh, hope, looking forward to seeing you on March 31st in Montreal, as you told uh, Montreal. me. Montreal. <laughs> Montreal. Montreal. See? <laughs> Very Western over here. Um, so, what does it make you feel when you create music? Oh, the, the, the creative process is is is, uh, is uh, it's like again, it's, it's a zone, and, and it's a it's a place you go and you surrender. I am amazed that without words, I can transmit all these emotions uh, to people. Um, I didn't know if that was possible when I was starting, but now that I've traveled around the world. I look down at the audience and I can see people smiling, I can see people crying. I, I know the message, the, the, the message is breaking through the language barrier. Um, in order to do that though, you can't describe all the emotions that we just heard about unless you really have felt them yourself. So it begins with me. It begins with me just knowing what something feels like. And then if you have the emotion, it's easier to decide uh, what sound to use with rhythm, um, you know, how to start it. Uh, and it's like a thread. It begins and the song reveals itself. Um, instrumental music is so powerful that it can transmit so subtle emotions so quickly and so accurately anywhere in the world. I think it, it is the most powerful language in the world. When you go into that zone, when you're starting to write Mm -hmm. and compose. Do you need to be alone? Do you sit with yourself? How, how is that process for you? Most of the time it is exactly like that. I have to, it, it is a, a focus and then it's surrender and you, then you have to stop being aware of what you're doing. You have to let the music come through you. And, and you're hearing it in your mind most of the time. I don't have to play the piano. Sometimes I do. Um, but you cannot judge what you're creating because judgment and creativity are opposites I've been saying that it's a very simple formula if you become aware of what you're doing you're not being it anymore if I'm writing a piece of music I'm supposed to let the music come right through without judging it like oh that was great or I don't like that or it's too fast or too slow that's judgment as soon as you do that you're outside looking in you're not in the process anymore, you're not part of it. And the creative process terminates right there, you're out. And then you get to learn how to be in, get back in the zone again. It takes years to learn. At, at the beginning, maybe I could stay this focused for maybe 30 seconds. Now I can do it for long 15 minutes at a time, 20 minutes at a time. Is that the one thing you would tell someone who wants to write music, compose music, be a superstar, would you, is that the best advice you'd give them? Or not the best, I shouldn't say the best. Is that a piece of advice you'd give them? Absolutely, it's, it's you know, I don't think trying to contrive art is a good thing. You know, we, we when we were kids and we were playing rock and roll bands, everybody was trying to write hit singles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the one hit wonders, of course. That's right. But, you know, I don't do that. I just, I just write music the way it comes out. If, if I have a feeling and an emotion, I want to express it, I express it and I will use, I, there are no rules in music. You, I'll use any instrument known to man with any rhythm, with any combination of anything if it's necessary to express a specific emotion. 
And if you do it honestly and you do it clearly, then it'll transfer and people will feel, experience that. And they are feeling that. Okay, we've already been going for so long. I mean, I can't believe it. A half hour has already gone by. So we're going to take a really quick bake, break. But don't worry, everyone. When we come back, we're going to answer more of your questions. And if you want to submit questions, just go to Yanni.com. And Yanni is going to answer one fan's question, which we all want to know. Is the stash going to come back? Hold that. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Lauren Sanchez. He has been called a force of nature and 
I can see why, having sold over 20 million albums and entertaining millions more at his groundbreaking concert events. We're getting up close and personal with the one and only Yanni, and we're going to get back to your questions in a minute. But first, I have one of my very own, which I found very uh -oh. fascinating. I know, this is very, this is concerning him just a little bit. You know,